Okay, let's have a look at the empirical rule specifically requested by one of these outliers down here, Richie Power, who walked up Crow Patrick with no shoes on. That makes him an outlier. Now, the Moivre, who you might remember from complex maths, complex numbers in maths, came up with this 68.95.99.7 rule. Let's just look at where these are. This is my average. I'm going to change this to uh, mu for average. This is mu plus one standard deviation. Let me make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to raise mu plus one standard deviation. This one, mu plus two standard deviations. And this one is mu plus three standard deviations and over the other side mu minus one of them mu minus two of them and mu minus three of them so in these little sections in here we have the difference between a hundred percent and 99.7 percent divided by two because there's two of them so that's 0.3%. So that 0.3% is made up of 0.15% of the data set being in there and 0.15% of the data set being in there. So think of any outlier, somebody that's eight foot tall or seven foot seven or whatever, anything that's based on a normal distribution and people's heights are normally dis distributed. So this is the normal distribution curve, which is what the empirical rule is based on. So inside these lines here, we have 68% of the normal distribution, which would put 34% in there and 34% in there. Within the next two, we have the difference between 68% and 95%, 68 minus 95 is 27% percent so that would leave 13.5 percent in there and 13.5 percent in there now the last bit is the difference between 95 percent and 99.7 percent which is four 0.7 percent and if we divide that by two we're going to get 2.35 percent so 2.35 and 2.35 now what does this mean standard deviation mu sigma okay well mu is equal to the average and this sigma small sigma is equal to standard deviation. Now there is a manual way to get standard deviation, but when we were in school in the dinosaur years, we had to do it. You guys have modern calculators now. You're never going to need to do standard deviation manually, but you do need to practice with the statistics mode on your calculator to get standard deviation. It doesn't just happen when you walk into an exam. It does require practice. In statistics, the standard deviation is a measure of the amount of variation of a set of values. So how far the values are away from the average. A low standard deviation indicates that the values tend to be close to the mean of the set, while a high standard deviation indicates the values are spread out over a much wider range. Okay, so the way they phrase these questions, they give us the average and ask us to work out several different things most of the time. Let's have a look at if the average is equal to let's say 1.25 centimeters now, this could be the length of screws the width of nails they can dress the question up whatever way they want but the math is always the same then they might tell you that 95 percent of the lengths are between two values and then they'll ask you to work out the standard deviation so let me see these two values are going to be between uh, 1.2375 centimeters and 1.2625 centimeters. 
So what do we know about 95% standard deviation? 95% 95% is plus or minus two standard deviations. I'll just write SD from now on for standard deviation. So if we get the difference between these two numbers, how many gaps are there? There's one, if we come up to the graph, one, two, three, four standard deviations involved in plus or minus two, obviously. So it's a really simple sum, 1.2625, take away 1 point, not 2, 1, just work that out, 1.2375, <laughs> and if we get our answer to that, what's the difference between these numbers? We could write the answer, but we know, what are we going to do with our answer? We're going to divide it by 4. So if we divide... 1.2625 minus 1.2375 by 4, we're going to get 0 0.00625 centimeters. So this will be the standard deviation. Okay, so the leading their questions that come up in the empirical rule. Normally at an ordinary level, you'll get a question in the empirical rule. It has been asked in 2018, it, it, there was a mention of empirical rule in the question. You didn't have to use it. So let's have a look at that type of question. It's based around Z scores. We know our Z scores are, are whatever we're testing, our test st statistic minus our average divided by our standard deviation will give us a Z score that we can then go to the Z score table and find out this line here, look down at this red line, find out where along this red line the student is or the, per the piece of data is. This is bang in the middle, this zero is bang in the middle. If we're at this end, we're an incredible outlier. If it's based on intelligence, if we're down this end, well, let's not be down that end. So what we want to do here, we're told that this shaded area is 67%. So in the Z-score tables, it starts at 0, 0, and that's 50%. That's the 0 represented here. And it goes all the way up to 3.09. So 3.09 standard deviations away pretty much from the center. So if we go to the Z-score table, and look up what value gives us 0.67, we're basically doing this formula here in reverse. So in the Z-score table, 0.67 is represented by the number 0 0.44 exactly. So the only math involved there is understanding Z-scores. No working out, no nothing involved. Now, in the second part, she's gotten the lower mark in maths. She's got 70 in maths, and she's got 72 in English. But which one is relatively better? So the standard deviation here is 15, and the standard deviation is 10. So it's going to tell me where along this line she is. So let's have a look along where along this red line Mary's results fit and that will tell us the higher she is towards this end the better she has done in with relative standing so we just fill these values into um into our z score formula so 70 is our test we're testing 70 we're taking away the average sorry my bad we're testing 65 and we're taking away the average and we're dividing by 15. That's five over five. That's minus five over 15, which is equal to minus one over three, which is equal to minus 0.33 recurring. For English, we're testing, she got 68. We're testing that against an average of 72 and a standard deviation of 10. And we can see that that's gonna be four minus four over 10 which is equal to minus 0 0.4. Now, interestingly, let's have a look along the line here. If this point here is minus 0 0.33, and let's just move away from the arrow, I know they're gonna be pretty close to each other, but if that point is minus 0 0.4, can you see that she's done better in maths than she has in English? Okay.
Okay, so in English, the top 15% were awarded in a grade, an A grade. So let's just have a look at a sketch of that. I think a sketch will always help you visualize in statistics where we are on this empirical curve or normal distribution or standard distribution. Let's take this dark area in here as 15%. The distribution is always red going in this direction. So the shaded, the lines here represent what percent? We've got 85%. So what we need to do is to get what this score, to get this number, what it would be as a Z score or what it would be um, as a Z score, we need to look up 85%, 0.85 as a Z score. And if you go to your Z score tables, you'll see that 1.03 is represented by the figure 0.8485 which is just under 85% and not 1.04 is represented by a number slightly bigger than 85%, 85, 08. So our Z score, when we get it, is gonna be 1.04. So our formula will be equal to 1.04. So what is our formula? We don't know what X is. We know the average, we're dealing with English, just let's check that average again. English was 72. So X minus 72 over the standard deviation for English was 10. Is equal to 1.04. If we continue to match down here, 10 by 1.04. X minus 72 is equal to 10 by 1.04, which is 10.4. And bring the 72 across our test statistic would have to be 82.4 and we are asked the least whole number mark so 82 wouldn't get you there you're just below the top 15 percent so x would have to be you'd have to get 83 percent in that case coming on now to the empirical real question so estimate the percentage who score between 52 and 82 so again let's do a sketch We've got my 50% in the middle. Now, what was that average? I'm not gonna take that zero away. The average was 72. The standard deviation was 10. So 82, we know what percentage is in there from earlier in the video. 62 here. And we know what percentage is in there. And what are we left with? Just 52, we up to 82. So back to 52. And we should know what percentage is in there. So you're telling me 34 by two, which is the 68 part of the empirical rule. And go all the way back up. What did we say was in there? Can you remember? 13 and a half percent, can you see it? So plus 13.5%. So a little knowledge goes a long way. What did these add up to? 81.5%. So the empirical rule, easy enough.